Good evening, I'm Michelle Lee. Coming up on News 6 at 6, an alleged mummy has been confiscated from a Duluth shop by the State Archaeological Society. A Duluth man was arraigned on a second-degree murder charge, and a Superior National Guard unit is bound for a training mission in Panama. Those stories and more next on News 6 at 6. You're watching KBJR. The news starts now. Northland's fastest growing television newscast, News 6. With Michelle Lee, Carol Hall's weather, and Mike Berklin with sports. Now, News 6 at 6. Good evening and thanks for joining us. A controversial mummy owned by Tony Sheeta has been confiscated by the Minnesota Archaeological Society. It was taken to St. Luke's Hospital to be x-rayed. The mummy was removed from this shop on Superior Street in Duluth early this morning after the state attorney general gave the Archaeological Society permission. The object is allegedly to be the mummified bodies of an Indian woman with her baby in her arms. The mother and baby were found in a cave where they had apparently frozen to death thousands of years ago. The x-rays are apparently to determine if the mummy is authentic and to try to determine a close estimation of its age. Members of the Archaeological Society refused to comment on their investigation. In other news, a Duluth man was arraigned in St. Louis County Court today on a second-degree murder charge. 31-year-old Terrence Charles Kemper, also known as Terry B. Smith, is charged with murder in the fatal stabbing of his girlfriend early yesterday morning. Police found the body of 36-year-old Derek Deborah Lynn Porter in her apartment on East 1st Street. She had been stabbed once in the chest. Police were called after a man called 911 and said a woman was bleeding in that apartment. Kemper was arrested at the home of a friend in Cloquet last night. His next court appearance is set for February 13th. In Wisconsin, a rural Bayfield man is dead after being shot by the Red Cliff Indian Reservation Police Chief. 34-year-old Stephen Bassina was fatally shot after authorities were called to a rural Bayfield home where Bassina reportedly was holding a 30-30 rifle on another man. When ordered to drop that weapon, Bassina began shooting at the officers. Red Cliff Chief of Police Alan Boyd fired one shot, striking Bassina. He was pronounced dead shortly after arrival at the Memorial Medical Center. An investigation of the incident is being conducted by the Bayfield County Sheriff's Department. Less than one week after two Duluth airmen missing in Panama were pronounced legally dead, yet another Northland Army National Guard unit is leaving for that country. Superior's 724th Engineering Battalion Headquarters Company is heading to Panama for a humanitarian mission. Tony Shockley explains the significance of Task Force Badger. So keep a good positive attitude when you're down there. Remember safety. The men and women of the North are heading south. The 724th Engineering Battalion is part of a large contingency of Wisconsin Army National Guard members that will be putting their skills to work in Panama. It's all part of Task Force Badger, a massive construction project to improve Panama's schools, hospitals, and roadways. We will be working with the Panamanian people and training them in plumbing, electrical work, uh, and also road construction, those kinds of projects. So we, it's a training mission for the Panamanian people so that they can help themselves. Many members of the unit are carpenters, plumbers, and electricians by trade, and they're looking forward to lending a helping hand. Well, I'm interested in going there to uh, doing the different construction sites, and I think it's great that we're helping them out and uh, building their clinics and their schools for them. And I'd like to go down there and see some of the culture and the different society of people. That'd be really interesting. But the trip is not without concern. It comes just a little more than a month after the disappearance of Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Dennis and Staff Sergeant Christopher Ford, two Duluth airmen with the 148th Fighter Interceptor Unit, now presumed dead following a separate training mission in Panama, a tragic event that has the 724th emphasizing safety. We try to prepare people saying you've got to be careful, you've got to be safe, you've got to work with the people and, uh, and be aware of what's going around. And, uh, but nobody can stop an accident, you know, a true accident that's, that was from happening. This rotation of Guard members will return to the Northland on February 9th, at which time another rotation will already be on its way down to Panama to continue the mission. In Superior, Tony Shockley, News 6.
The brother of Staff Sergeant Christopher Ford, the Duluth Airman now presumed dead, is also a member of the 724th. Jeffrey Ford was one of the 50 Guard members to leave with the unit for Panama today. During the confirmation hearings of Clarence Thomas for the Supreme Court, the issue of sexual harassment in the workplace received a great deal of attention. It made many people take note that harassment occurs in industry and in the office and even in high schools. Derek Hines is here now with an example from a local school. Derek? Michelle, of course, the issue of sexual harassment doesn't stop with Anita Hill. It was a highly publicized case that brought the issue of sexual harassment into our living rooms for a short time, but it's all around us. In 1989, harassment affected Katie Lyle, a high school student in Duluth. Someone had written derogatory statements about her on a boys' room wall at Central High School. When she found out about it, she asked the school to have the graffiti removed from the wall, but she says they didn't. So she took them to court and won a settlement. Today, she appeared on a nationally syndicated talk show to tell her story. Um, like I say, it could have been a guy that wanted me or something and I didn't, didn't date, so it wasn't that. It wasn't that I actually was like this. Was, was, was your name the only name on the... In this style, it was considered the Katie style. My friends considered it the Katie style. And stall. everybody in school knew about mm -hmm. it. You told your parents? After two months. The first two months, I was too embarrassed to tell them. I was too afraid, you know. And when, when you told them what happened? They were outraged. They were really upset. I mean, if I was your father, I mean, I'd go down to that school, and I'd be there with a cleaner, and I'd be there with a rag, and I'd take it off myself. I guess that thought crossed my mind, too, but I guess I thought when I ask someone in authority of me, you know, to take something off the wall, that they'll do it. So you finally sued? Yeah. And settled? Mm-hmm. In the aftermath of that incident, Duluth Central High School has developed a sexual harassment policy. To date, cases of possible harassment are reported almost equally by male and female students. The school regularly polices restrooms as well because, as Katie Lyle knows, words on a wall can be just as damaging as verbal or physical assault. Derek, why did Povich have her on his program to begin with? It was just a, a chance to show on a national level that the sexual harassment that we hear about in the office is not the only place, and then it's right down to uh, the students in our high schools. All right. Thank you very much. In other news, Pope John Paul II might visit the Twin Cities next year. A papal visit would be part of World Youth Day, an annual Roman Catholic gathering. The event could bring as many as one million young people to Minnesota. Other sites now being considered are Chicago, Seattle, Buffalo, and Denver. The Catholic Bulletin published by the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis says the site for World Youth Day will be announced by April 12th, which is Palm Sunday. Still ahead on News 6 at 6, Doug Douglas County may soon have a new recreational trail, and hundreds of figure skaters have converged on Duluth, participating in the Northland Invitational. From Nickerson to Drummond, this is New 6 at 6 on KBJR. Watch for the Real Deal logo for your chance to solve the puzzle and win a $60 catering gift certificate from Kentucky Fried Chicken, only on KBJR Stereo 6. Easy Housing of Duluth says the time is right to move into your new pre-built Wisconsin home. Quality construction is right. A wise alternative to stick building, fully completed within six weeks. Ramblers, split entry walkouts, recreation models, hundreds of floor plans from which to choose. And Easy Housing says the price is right. Mortgage rates are right. Order now for summer and fall delivery and save. Easy Housing of Duluth invites you to inspect Wisconsin homes on display. the new Toyota Camry stack up. Anything they can do, we can do better. Can we deliver? Yes, we can. More power? Yes, we can. More room? Yes, we can. More safety? Yes, we can. The new Camry, roomier, more powerful, safer than ever. The quality Middle America wants. And right now, the deal you want, too. No, you can't. Yes. We can. You can't do any better than Toyota. Can we deliver? See your Toyota dealer today and find out. Yes, we can. That is a little weird. That's a, that's a little sh
If you're an outdoor enthusiast, you might be interested to know that the state of Wisconsin just purchased an additional 11 miles of abandoned Sioux Line Railroad to add to their trail system. The state of Wisconsin paid $30,000 for the line, which runs through Douglas County. The trail system isn't quite ready for trekking through yet. It still needs to be fully developed by the county, but once it's finished, it could mean a boost for tourism in Superior. A lot of this comes from leadership with that tiny little state of it. We uh, could readily develop uh, Superior as a hub, uh, connecting uh, several hundred miles of the finest trail system in uh, the Midwest. The county hopes to bring the trail into Superior by way of the Superior Municipal Forest. The only thing standing in the way of that is a resolution for an ordinance that would restrict the development of any new trail systems for the next two years. That ordinance will come before voters in April, but according to Boyle, regardless of the outcome of that vote, they will find a way to bring that trail into town. Over 700 figure skaters from all over Canada and the Midwest have converged on Duluth this weekend for the largest non-qualifying figure skating competition in the United States. Heather Filkins has been at the Northland Invitational today. She joins us live from Pioneer Hall. Heather? Michelle, this is the first day of the three-day competition. As you said before, this is a non-qualifying event, which means the skaters aren't vying for a spot on the Winter Olympic skating team. They're just here for the thrill of competition and the pure joy of skating. The ages here range from 5 to 20 years old in the competition. This is the nation's top figure skating competition. It's a sport that combines beauty, grace, and precision. I don't know, it's exciting when you jump in. It's kind of scary sometimes. And I like my friends and everything at skating. It's really exciting when you like when you land like a new jump and stuff. And it's just a challenge. And it's just really fun to know that you're doing something that a lot of kids can't do. But this weekend there's more than a couple that can do it. Nearly 700 skaters doing jumps, spins, and fancy footwork, all to win that championship medal. Most of these skaters start when they're very young. Like I say, the youngest one is five, and they can. there is like 10 different levels of freestyle, which they have to test to go on to the next level. And with each level comes greater work and dedication, proving practice does make perfect. With just two thin steel blades between them and the ice, wipeouts are bound to happen. But that doesn't make it any less frustrating. I feel really stupid. I feel like I could have done that if I, like, after I'm done, I feel like I can go back out there and just do it all perfect. <laughs> but you only get one chance. <laughs> I don't know, I just get up and try it again, I guess, until I can do it right. And doing it right is exactly the attitude of the competitors here as they skate towards their goals and have some fun along the way. Reporting live from the arena, I'm Heather Filkins, News 6. Thank you, Heather. Well, winter colds have many people calling their doctors, but in today's Health Beat report, Dr. Bob Lanier says there is a limit to what can be done over the phone. The telephone can be a terrible diagnostic tool if, for example, you develop what you think is a sinus infection. You may be tempted to pick up the phone and call your doctor and say, would you call me in an antibiotic? Now, you may know to pause at this point. The doctor's probably trying to decide if it's worthwhile to try and explain the fact it may not be the best idea or he may just capitulate and call it in. Now, that happens more often in adults than children. Infections many times need to be seen to be graded. Now, I mean, you may think it's just your sinuses, but a physical may show that the throat or the ears are involved. Now that would affect the choice of antibiotics a great deal and also govern the length of time you take them. Sometimes the pattern of infection may suggest that no antibiotic be used, which is good. Now it's ironic, but often the doctors that are the best ones are the ones that are most uncooperative. I'm Dr. Bob Lanier. On Monday, Dr. Bob will have an update on lung transplants. Carol Hall's next with the weekend weather, but first, here's what's coming up on News 6 Nightside. We teach our children about health, safety, ethics, and morality, but experts say we fail when it comes to telling them about money. We'll have a special report. A new service is being offered to the estimated 2 million women with silicone breast implants. It's offered by the Medic Alert Foundation. And MPCA officials are in Hermantown to discuss cleanup of Minnesota's worst polluted site. Watch News 6 Nightside at 10.
An announcement from Chevrolet Motor Division. 2.9% financing for 48 months has been extended on Chevy Cavalier. Here's what it means to you. 2.9 means the lowest finance rates in years on Chevy Cavalier. 2.9 means you drastically lower your monthly payments, saving you hundreds. 2.9 means another great reason to buy a dependable, quality, American-built Cavalier. 2.9 means don't wait. This is a limited-time offer exclusively at your Lake Country Chevy dealers. There's hidden power in your TV. Second audio program, Weather. If you have a stereo television set, you can now access up-to-the-minute weather reports day or night. Just turn on KBJR-TV and select SAP Audio on your stereo set. A forecast for the list period in the Senate, including... You'll hear the latest weather from the National Weather Service. Tune into KBJR-TV for the most complete weather information offered. SAP Weather, only on Stereo 6, your news channel. More adventures of a lifetime on the next runaway. Say aloha to Hawaii with Cheryl Teagues and Cheryl Ladd, two beauties on one island in the sun. There's no business like monkey business. The major dad girls hit LA's Universal Studios. Kevin Dobson falls for the world's most romantic city, Verona, Italy, the birthplace of love. All on the next globe-hopping runaway, it's your ticket to ride. Saturday night on Stereo 6. Well, Bundy? Yes, hold the applause. A shoe salesman, come on, nobody's a shoe salesman. <laughs> I'm home. Admit you care. Would that make you happy? Yes. Mm, I care. I'm not convinced. That's because I don't care. Nelly Blue Children, Sunday night at 10.30 on Stereo 6. You're watching KBJR. The news continues. Big plans per hour. The barometer 2994 and holding steady. It is cool around the Northland, but without the wind, it doesn't feel so brutal. 15 right now in Ashland. That's very nice. Grand Marais checking in with 10 above. 3 degrees right now at Thunder Bay. 11 in Fargo. We've got a couple of storm systems uh, to deal with today. One of them we don't have to worry about for much longer. This Alberta clipper is clipping off into the Atlantic, but it did manage to dump oh, about six inches of snow in South Bend, Indiana. And of course, as that uh, system moves, it brings the winds right out of the Northwest. So lake effects snow for the typical lake effects snow belt areas. Look what's coming our way though. Another Alberta clipper. This one is not going to have a major impact on the Northland. However, if you're traveling tonight to Southwestern Minnesota, be aware there is a snow advisory in effect there. We're looking at as much as four inches of snow accumulating in the extreme Southwestern part of the state about two inches falling in the Twin Cities and not enough to write home about in the Northland. Look at the clouds moving into our region as that clipper continues to advance and this clipper really is managing to clip. We see a lot of snow associated with that system. Just about one hour ago, the snow was barely at the Minnesota-North Dakota border. Well, look where it's at right now. It has come clipping on through. We expect the Twin Cities metro area to start seeing some of that snow anytime now. Uh, some of the visitors uh, might get a little taste of Minnesota. And that clipper will continue to clip by tomorrow. It'll be down there in the Carolinas and they might see some snow in Dixie for tomorrow. Look at our high temps tomorrow. Looks like the teens throughout much of the Northland. The forecast says tonight some snow, but again, no significant accumulation. Down to 7 degrees below on the range. 1 below Twin Ports. 5 above northwestern Wisconsin. Tomorrow a little bit on the cool side, but not bad. Partly cloudy in the afternoon, 10 on the range, 11 Twin Ports, 15 northwestern Wisconsin. Some more snow could come our way on Saturday night. Again, we don't expect a significant accumulation. 9 below on the range, 2 below Twin Ports, 6 northwestern Wisconsin. And Super Sunday, not too bad at all. A light snow, 11 on the range, 18 Twin Ports, 20 northwestern Wisconsin. The look ahead, I think you like this. Partly cloudy. 23 on Monday, partly cloudy, 33 on Tuesday, 33 mm. with more snow possible on Wednesday. We like, we mm. like. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Still to come in sports, checking out every Couch Potatoes football fantasy. Mike Berklin will have that and much more when we come back.
Carol Hall's Weather, brought to you by ICO. Now more than ever, there's only one way to go. Go with community-minded ICO. Everyone knows there's only one way to go for all your gas, fuel oil, and convenience store needs. And that's with the locally owned company that continues to give you more, ICO. In fact, ICO will give you a free hot wash, wax, and dry car wash when you make five ICO gasoline purchases of six gallons or more. Pick up an ICO car wash club card today, then fill it up for a free car wash good at three Twin Ports locations. Now more than ever, there's only one way to go. Go with ICO. They appreciate your business. You bet they do. It's here. The super event you've been waiting for. It's Super Savings Days at your local Northland Ford dealer. Now backed by popular demand, 2.9% financing on Ford Escort, America's best-selling small car. That's right. Get 2.9 financing for 48 months or 750 cash back. Hurry in during Super Savings Days because 2.9 financing on Escort ends February 4th. See your local Northland Ford dealer today. On the next new WKRP in Cincinnati... We're about to meet the guy who's putting color back in Claire's cheeks. Claire's courting a handsome lawyer. Let's talk about getting into your briefs. But he'd rather try Mona. And Dana. Yeah, it can get pretty ugly. Claire, he came on to me. Is Claire gunning for revenge? We've got an estrogen war going on out there like you can't believe. <laughs> You'll be the judge on the next new WKRP. Sunday night on Stereo 6. to a new time slot. The Minnesota State Lottery Daily 3 and Go for 5 have moved to 6.50 p.m. Now watch exclusive drawings every night at a new time. Live lottery drawings are only on KBJR Television Channel 6. Hoopla 92 continues. Less than 48 hours away now, the Bills and Redskins will kick off at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of people in that I Metrodome guess. this weekend. It's going to be a hot experience. And playing in a big game like the Super Bowl is every young football player's dream. Catching the game-winning pass or running for 200 yards is a fantasy for most of us. But as Tom Hansen tells us, you can fulfill that dream by living out the NFL experience. <laughs> It's not every day you can pretend you are an NFL football player. But yesterday in the Twin Cities, I was able to live out that fantasy. The NFL experience opened today in Minneapolis at the Convention Center, and 100,000 people are expected to simulate the life of an NFL player. It starts bright and early, getting up in the morning with a room decked out in your favorite team colors. The NFL experience includes activities for the whole family, and you don't have to be an athlete to enjoy the theme park. The NFL experience is a first time ever event and it, it is really a thing for fans and families, the people who don't generally get to go to the Super Bowl to experience the NFL. And it's really, it's been described as sort of a Disneyland and the NFL Hall of Fame across between the two of them. At the NFL experience, you can meet pros like Daryl Green of the Redskins, Jim Kelly of the Buffalo Bills, and even Bears defensive lineman Refrigerator Perry. And we even bumped into a real NFL quarterback. I think it's great. It gives people an opportunity to come in here and, and simulate it, see a chance to see an opportunity with the rest of us get to see out there. It's fun to throw this quarterback challenge like they do in Hawaii and meet Refrigerator Perry and kick an extra point. It's, it's, it's interesting, and I think the people are going to have three days of great fun here. Plans are to take it to Pasadena next year and then take it to Atlanta the year after that uh, for the 28th Super Bowl. And they're going to try to take elements of the experience around the country during the next two years. Here I am. I'm in the NFL. I'm part of the NFL experience here at the Minneapolis Convention Center. It'll open up every day at 9 o'clock and you can even see part of the Football Hall of Fame. Normally you have to go to Canton, Ohio, but you can see it here in Minneapolis. It was originally the Super Bowl trophy and in 1964 was uh, renamed the Vince Lombardi Trophy. So it, it is just quite an interesting thing to see. It's worth quite a bit of money. Some of the other artifacts are posters from the 1900s, Newt Rockney's helmet, we've got Walter Payton's jersey, we have William Perry's Super Bowl ring, which is a size 23. If you ever had aspirations to be a pro football player or just see what it's like to be one, the NFL experience is your chance to live out a dream. 
at the Minneapolis Convention Center, Tom Hansen, Sports 6. Those shoulder pads looked a little big on Tom, didn't they? Don't forget kickoff for Super Bowl 26 this Sunday just after 5 o'clock p.m. The Bulldogs hockey team is venturing into very unfriendly territory for their weekend series with Northern Michigan. The Bulldogs haven't won in Lakeview Arena since 1985, and this weekend's two-game series would be a good time to break that 14-game losing streak in Marquette. The Bulldogs trail the Wildcats by just four points in the league standings, while Minnesota's still on top with 28 points and Wisconsin is second. The Wildcats are within striking distance in third, and the Bulldogs know it. Like we were saying, it's not a jinx anymore. We're trying to we're trying to get that across to most of the guys here that they are just a team, and we can beat them in our own rink. They haven't had that much luck in our rink, and and uh, we haven't had any luck in their rink. So so it's just it's just we're going to concentrate on playing them and not not playing the elements up there. So we we're, we know we're capable of beating the team. You know, it's all it is. It's a different it's a different sheet of ice, and we just have to put that you know the away idea out of our mind and just play hard like we would here. And uh, the UWS Yellow Jackets will be in Mankato this weekend, taking on the Mankato State Mavericks. Scott Engwin, a former uh, uh, Scott Engen, rather, a former Bulldog, will skate with UWS this weekend, making his debut there. And Grand Rapids will close out its wonderful world of winter this weekend with a grand finale at the Mount Itasca Ski Hill. The Winter Schloss weekend will end with the Central Ski Association Junior Jumping Tournament off the new Ole Armang Seth Memorial 70-meter hill. A senior ski jumping event will also take place along with downhill and cross country skiing. Sliding will be available for those who prefer to go down a hill with their uh, center of gravity yeah. a bit closer Lightning. to good old Mother Earth. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Regis Philbin. <laughs> and I'm Kathy Lee Gifford. And on the next live, meet the man who plays it strictly by the books, TV's new breed of law and order, Paul Sorvino, and... Oh, stop, stop, it's not that bad. We won't even say it. You won't believe your eyes when the guru of good health, Richard Simmons, trims the fat and fills you in on the surprising results from our own special weight gain test. You don't want to miss it. On the next live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Weekday mornings at 9 on Stereo 6. at 4 on Stereo 6. Follow the bouncing balls to a new time slot. The Minnesota State Lottery Daily 3 and Go for 5 have moved to 6.50 p.m. Now watch exclusive drawings every night at a new time. Live lottery drawings are only on KBJR Television Channel 6. What does American Gladiators sound like? What does it sound like? Sounds exciting. American Gladiators. Saturday at midnight on Stereo 6. Tonight at 10, we'll have a special report about what parents should tell their kids about money. For that story and all the news since 6, join us for News 6 Nightside at 10. Till then, good night. Men's wardrobe provided by Reinholz, Miller Hill Mall, Main Entrance.